Hello YouTube, Film Buff 6 here, coming your way with a review of Never Let Me Go, which was released in 2010, was based on the Booker Prize winning novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, who also wrote The Remains of the Day, and was directed by Mark Romanek, who had previously directed Robin Williams in One Hour Photo over ten years prior, over ten years ago. And the, the story of the film revolves around the lives of three people, which are Kathy, played by Kerry Mulligan, Ruth, played by Kira Knightley, <clears throat> and Tommy, played by Andrew Garfield. And um, this is going this is going to be um, a spoiler filled review. So if you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you turn off this video right now and I'm going to to um, to describe the the whole story using um, the IMDB page instead of Wikipedia this time the film begins with on-screen captions explaining that a medical breakthrough in 1952 has permitted the human lifespan to be extended beyond 100 years Subsequently, the film is narrated by 28-year-old Kathy H. as she reminisces about her childhood at Hailsham as well as her adult life after leaving the school. The first section of the film depicts the young Kathy along with her friends Tommy and Ruth spending their childhood at Hailsham, a seemingly idyllic English boarding school. It is subtly revealed that the film is set in an alternate 20th century. Fascinating. One of the teachers is fired after telling the pupils of their fate. They exist to provide donor organs for transplants. They will be nurtured to adult age, at, at which time they will be available for selection. After their third selection, they will complete before they can be selected for any more procedures. Some complete after their first though, while others survive through four or more procedures. Tommy is emotionally angry and is teased by the other boys. Kathy falls in love with him. In the second section of the film, the three friends, now teenagers, about 19 years old, are rehoused in cottages on a rural farm, and this takes place in 1983. They are permitted to leave the grounds if they wish. They do not question the ethics of their situation. At the farm they meet other graduates of similar places. Kathy, Tom and Ruth are clones who are fascinated by the idea of finding the original people that they were modelled on. Kathy and her friends are questioned about rumours of the possibility of deferral, which allows couples several extra years before being selected if they are in love and can prove it. Tommy reasons that the art gallery at Hailsham was intended to identify clones who have a soul. Tommy and Ruth become sexually active. The lonely Kathy applies to become a carer, 
a clone who is taught to drive and trained to give post-operative care to others and given a temporary reprieve from selection as an exchange for supporting and comforting donors as they are made to give up their organs. She has become a carer by the time she hears that Tommy and Ruth have split up. In the th and, and by the way, the first scenario takes place in 1978. Anyway, in the third scenario of the film, Kathy has been working as a carer some years later. This takes place in 1994. She has watched many clones complete as their organs are donated. Their deaths are referred to as completion. She reunites with Ruth, who is frail after two donations, which I have to admit is very, very hard to watch. Ruth has been keeping track of her and Tommy. She helps Kathy arrange their reunion. Ruth admits that she did not love Tommy and seduced him because she was jealous and afraid to be alone. She is consumed with guilt and has been searching for a way to help Tommy and Kathy. And after her third donation, Ruth dies on the operating table. She believes that Tommy and Kathy would qualify bef bef prior to this though, she believes that Tommy and Kathy would qualify for deferral. She gives them an address, that of Madame, who would visit the Hailsham and select works of the student's art would be worthy to go into the gallery. Ruth, as I've, as I've just said, completes on the operating table shortly afterward. Tommy explains to Kathy that he has been creating art for the past several years in hopes of a deferral. He and Kathy drive to visit the Madame. There is no such thing as deferral after all though. Tommy's artwork will not help them. Then Tommy asks to to asks Kathy to stop the car so that he can get out and Tommy then then screams in a fit of rage and frustration which I have to admit is um, a pretty emotional scene and Andrew Garfield scream and Andrew Garfield screams are fantastic the the film ends after Tommy has completed, that means that he's died. Kathy is left alone. Two weeks after losing Tommy, Kathy is notified that her first selection will take place in a month's time. Contemplating their childhood, she speculates whether their fate is really also different from the people who receive their organs, and she says these words, we all complete. Maybe none of us really understand what we've lived through, or feel we've had enough time. That sums up the whole movie. Now, what did I think of Never Let Me Go? Now, this is, now, um, I've, um, now, now, I've watched this for the first time last night, and I have to say it is bloody fantastic. I mean, it is bloody fantastic, and I think it's one of the most underrated films of, um, of the de- I feel it's one of the most underrated films of the decade so far. Um, the cinematography is gorgeous. The the script is very well written by Alex Garland. Um, 
Mark Romanek's direction is Mark Romanek's direction is fantastic. The th the trio of performances from uh, Kerry Mulligan, um, Andrew Garfield, and Kira Knightley are just brilliant. Um, the music is the music is beautiful. The the editing is the editing is brilliant. Um, editing is brilliant. Um, oh, what else? Um, the story is great and has loads and loads of, and and is and is basically an old fashioned. A love story, but just with a few science fiction elements and ideas. Elements and ideas. Um, uh, of interesting science fiction elements and ideas about how um, how valuable life is and how and um, and what we have to do to make sure that our lives are are um, are worthwhile and um, and that sort of thing and um, and I have to congratulate Kazuo Ishiguro for coming up with um, another great novel. I haven't read it, but um, but after watching this. Film, I am intrigued to to do so. I'm very intrigued to do so. Um, so and um, and I know that a lot of people say that um, that the f that this say say that this film is too long. That 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 the um, that the love triangle is all cliched. That. That um, that that the story is boring and the characters aren't that well developed. Um, let me and um, and I do not think any of those things. I think I think it is a fantastic film as it is, and um, and I think you really should check this out. Be and I really think you should check this out. It is, it is, um, it is fantastic. It is, um, it is dramatic. It is emotional. It is emotional. It has a lots of interesting science fiction ideas running through it. Um, for those of you who want, who um, who want to um, who want to um, actually think while watching a movie. Um, I think you should definitely, definitely check this out. I would recommend this to you very, very highly. And I am going to give this film a perfect rating of 10 out of 10. Now, feel free to leave a comment in the section below and let me, and let me know your thoughts on Never Let Me Go. Or um or or never let me go or Kira Knightley or Kerry Mulligan or Andrew Garfield. Plus, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And um, until my next video, whatever it may be, do take care, everyone, and goodbye.